little bit more about your deep relationship in sports with your agency and the recent passing of Kobe Bryant? Oh. Okay. Um. Let's just start with Kobe. Um. So Kobe um, was a guy that uh, uh, looked up to me, and we we we've hung out multiple times. And he was last at my house on New Year's, and um, he was uh, he was just in the greatest space that I've I've seen him in, and. He, one of the last things he said to me was, you gotta see Gianna uh, play basketball. And that was one of the, the, the most hurtful things, because he was so proud. And, and the look on his face was like, I, was, I looked at him and said, oh, she's going to be the best uh, female basketball player in the world. He had this, he was just so proud of what he said. So that's really a tough one. And, and uh, my wife and I took that and taken that really tough. Um, that's all I'll say on, on, on that. Um, he's just, just a great human being and was in a great space in his life. And as far as the sports agency, I guess that goes hand to hand. Like I met some of the, we, you know, we come from the same neighborhood. So, um, you know, I've seen LeBron grow up and, you know, um, we've been around each other and we had a mentoring relationship. I think Mav is here tonight. I think he's somewhere in here, if not. He, um, you know, I mean, we just been so close together that it was a natural uh, uh, relationship just to be involved with sports and, and to, to work together. There's a knowing in being an artist. There's a knowing. You can't guess. You can't think. There's a knowing. You have to know that even if it doesn't work today, tomorrow, this artists that I play that weren't popular at the time, that I play more than I play current artists. Shiggy Otis, I suggest you just go look up Shiggy Otis. It was amazing. At the time, that was, you got no Shiggy Otis? And at the time, it wasn't this hugely popular thing, but I think we, we I think when it all is said and done, we would play that music more than any other music, right? So you have to have this knowing that, okay, it may not work today, it may not work tomorrow, but this is the right thing and this is what I'm doing and this is what's feeding me. So I'll, that, that would be the best advice that I can, I can give you, that knowing, just, just believe in what you're doing. And if, it's, and if you don't believe in it, then you're not doing it. You, you, you haven't figured out the thing that you do best yet. When you feel it and when you know, no one can tell you. You only have to be right once. Mm. Thank you. <laughs> I have uh, a question about incarceration and education. However, I never was allowed to speak in the courtroom, so I'm gonna lead you to be a little more permissible with me, because the judge ain't let me speak too much. The prosecutors didn't let me speak too much when I did that decade for manslaughter and attempted murder. The question is about what is the, the power of education? What's the utility of it? So the last time I see you, I was hoping OG was here. The last time I saw you, OG he's here? right there. Okay. What's up, Juan? Shout it out. Where's Ann at? He's right there, second row, right there. Okay, well, the last time I, I saw you was probably in 02. I'm up at the Rucker Park. We're sitting inside the Entertainers Basketball um, Bar with my boy Greg Maris, God bless. And you and Juan was deciding whether or not y'all was going to put a team in, team in there. And that's when I had my boy Bone Collector, you end up showing up, you know, Beyonce was at the game, y'all played us, Clue was on my side, and y'all smoked us, because you had too much money. We had one NBA player that was a bench player, and you came in there with like five starters. Right. Sorry. Your boy, your, your boy Wong, me and him was sitting inside, we both was members of the Reebok Sports Club, and he was trying to get me on a different path. He was giving me an education, and I don't even know how much education he had, but I wasn't listening, I was hard-headed. All I knew is the streets, rap music and I was trying to be you, but I couldn't be you, right? So I just happened to just land in a prison, one of these prisons, because we all know in 1994, they move higher education out of prison. I was fortunate enough 
to land in one of those prisons where I took some Columbia class, my GPA is out the roof, graduated valedictorian. Now I'm a program developer here at the Center for Justice and just now I'm about to roll out educational programs in five different prisons in South Carolina just alone right there. So for me, for me, right, there's nothing more important than, than, than freeing my mind, right? And there was two things that I could have came out of, out of there with, right? They could have gave me a gun in my hand or they could put a book. And now I'm as powerful as I can be and I wonder what is your thoughts on education in prison and how are we gonna get those Pell Grants reinstated for mm. incarcerated people? Mm. Mm. And, and my name is Jay Holder, just in case you don't remember, Jay Holder. Yes, sir. <laughs> well, two of the uh, things that I'm uh, most passionate about and the things I worked on the longest, my, my mother's here, she started, uh, we started this Sean Carter, where is she actually? Please stand up a bit, cause stand up, don't be shy. Right? That's my mother. And we started the Sean Carter Foundation, I wanna say 12, is it 12 years now? Okay, help me with the math though, is it 12? <laughs> 17 years, okay. Thank you, thank you, mom. Um, wow, 17 years? And my mom, is, she goes on bus tours and take young kids from, who's never left the neighborhood, herself, the bus, every single year she, she goes. Um, and now we started reform, the two things you're speaking about. So once we figure out how to put these two things together and have them work together, as well as um, uh, changing these laws, um, I would love to work with you. I don't know how I could get, get in touch with you. I, I, think, I think your story's amazing. I think your story's amazing and we should probably, you know, you can educate us on some things actually. Really. All right, thank you. I feel honored to be in these situations that I could use my voice and, and do the things I do, you know. Um, is an extension of my family. It's like the, the things that I do. I tell, I tell my, um, my, um, my family all the time. I tell my grandmother, my mom, you know, they, 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 they're proud. They're super proud and strong <laughs> women. And they, they won't ask me for anything. Mm -hmm. And I say, man, you know, there are times where I don't want to get my picture taken and I want to eat. And, and, you know, paparazzi like take photos in your face and screaming at you and like taking pictures and you can't take your kid to the park. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, those are the sort of things that Give, the reason why I'm okay with it and, and, and why I can cope and live with these things without, you know, as much as a complaint is the things that it allows me to, 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 to do, the spaces that it affords me, the, the rooms I'm allowed to go in as myself. I walk in every room as myself. I don't walk in any room as anyone else. I'm not, I'm not cowering. I'm not speaking soft. I'm not my voice doesn't change, it sounds exactly the same way. I'm walking as myself and proud and I speak and I speak for us and that and that that gives me a joy. That gives I'm honored to be in, in those rooms and so yeah. What what are your hopes for this lecture series? What would you like to see come out of it? I think this was a great start. The, 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 the conversations went from everywhere, right? Mm -hmm. Just open dialogue and real honest um, conversations, because until we have an honest conversation, we can pretend, you know, that everything's okay. We can pretend and we can uh, we can brush over the issue and like, but deep dive into conversations and how we really feel. How do we feel about what's going on? What are we gonna do? What are we gonna try to do? Who can who can be a source of help? You know, how can we how can we, you know, uh, introduce each other? How can we? How, where can I be helpful? You know, I got all sorts of calls when I was uh, starting Parchment from like street guys calling me on the phone like, man, you know, my guys up there locked up in Parchment. I like what you're doing. How can I help? Mm -hmm. You know, and you know, th these are guys who can mobilize 10,000 um, real guys in the street. Mm -hmm. And you know, you could put boots on the ground, right? So this, these sort of conversations that need to be had in a, in a real way.
in a real way. We can all dazzle each other with language. You know, we, 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 we've learned enough to play with language, but just to get down to the honesty of what's happening and, you know, just push it forward.